லைவ்ல இருக்கு மேம் ஸ்டார்ட் பண்ணுங்க சார் இன்ட்ரோ ஆரம்பிச்சலாமா சார் போ லைவ்ல இருக்கு மேம் சார் ஆஃப் celebrating kamarajas birthday as kalvi thiruvilla we the nscetians stepping into the another milestone of teaching learning process that is hosting such webinars we are or welcoming you for this wonderful webinar on voice automation and networking conducting by our department of electronics and communication engineering nada saraswati college of engineering and technology uh, before getting into this technical session we request all the participants to mute their microphone and be ready to actively participate participate the webinar um we request you to patiently wait for the uh, ending session of ending the session of yes. presenters after that you can drop your queries in the chat box too with this quick note i would like to call upon dr adilingam sir our department head to propose the welcome address sir i am handing over to you sir good morning it's my pleasure to deliver the welcome address for one day webinar on voice networking and automation organized by electronics and communication engineering department of nada saraswati college of engineering and technology on this occasion i am thankful to our secretary mr kathir babu sir joint secretary rajkumar sir and our principal for Uh, granting us permission for this event i welcome the vice principals head of various departments faculty members and spectators from in and outside organization to witness this fruitful event i am happy to introduce the host of this even the chief guest of this event mr v shakti venkatesh the tech analyst and manager hcl technologies chennai he has completed his schooling at tmh new matriculation higher secondary school teni He does B Electronics and Communication Engineering at Pandian Saraswati College of Engineering and Technology. He has 13 years of experience in IT sector. The major companies include Microwave Communications, Wisegear Network Technologies, HCL Technologies, and Tata Consulting Services. At present, he is working at HCL Technologies. I am happy and welcoming Mr. Mr. Vishakti Venglis, and I am handing the session to him. Welcome, sir. hi uh, thanks for introduction uh, adi uh, it's been a pleasure uh, joining with you all um, okay it is uh, completely new for me at the uh, this like a webinar it's a, it's the first time i'm taking it um, uh, earlier i have taken it in a, taken it uh, in a room or within a class and it is a live session which is going on thanks for this opportunity adi and team um, let's uh, see the screen uh, uh, we can just move on to the screen uh, the topic we are going to look today is network uh, voice and automation okay i had a slide for uh, self introducing myself but uh, uh, most of them uh, give me a moment most of the information has been given by uh, adi about me and um, i just want to uh, uh, briefly explain that i have uh, 13 plus years of nearly 14 years of experience in voice in uh, multiple uh, um, it sectors currently i am with hcl technologies uh, you know one thing i chose this career uh, with the help of a person i not even know uh, his name is kishore i was a fresher coming out from college and uh, searching for a job uh, and i was looking i am not sure which domain i need to so i just uh, picked up a random profile who is into networking i hate development so i chose networking so uh, i just called him and uh, i spoke with him he took uh, 15 minutes of his time and he analyzed my my um, career i told i am uh, be a bachelor of engineering in ec 
and um, he was into Cisco voice. He suggest me, suggested me few domains and he preferred me or Cisco voice. So I started my career from there and uh, I'm here now. Um, that uh, before starting this session, I just want to make sure uh, that uh, this session is not going to be for experts or uh, professors or uh, who is into research uh, scholars of that kind. This session is for uh, people who is going to begin the career, beginners, freshers, and they want to choose which domain they need to. And uh, I have a lot of confusions. Uh, I put myself in this place and I started uh, uh, preparing this talk. Okay, let's move on uh, to the slide. The topics we gonna see is um, um, only three, that is Cisco Unified Communication Manager, Cisco uh, Unified uh, Contact Center Solution, and automation concepts and making uh, market requirement. Before uh, moving into Cisco Unified Communication Manager raw into the topic, I just want to know um, how uh, the Cisco uh, uh, certification is elevated. Um, these are all the topics we're gonna cover in the later slides. Um, just an intro, a couple of minutes. It is an, uh, we, uh, Cisco has segregated itself. It's an entry level associate, professional expert, an architect. And um, regarding, uh, we have uh, in Cisco, according to the market standard or market uh, demand, they have segregated into nine categories. It is wireless, uh, service providers, security, routing switching. Everyone knows routing switching, I know. Um, industry, industrial, design, data center, collaboration, cloud. We are going to uh, completely look into collaboration. I'll, I'll explain you later. And I'll say you the hot uh, uh, market, uh, evergreen market is routing switching. No one, uh, everyone knows. And uh, the current market is into cloud, wireless, security, collaboration, and data center design as well. You need, uh, you need to have a very pay, you're looking for a huge pay, you need to choose security and wireless and then move on to collaboration. Collaboration, I'm not letting it down, but comparatively, it is uh, uh, highly paid uh, profiles. We have uh, CCN, uh, NA voice, and then CCNP voice, NP voice has five papers, and CCIE, I'm pursuing the CCIE right now. It will take time for me to complete. Okay, it's a simple intro about uh, Cisco, uh, certifications um, <clears throat> I believe uh, most of them uh, in this group uh, have learned the seven layers right even I did randomly uh, it is so funny when I'm when I when you uh, when I say how I started learning this uh, seven layers it's it's like uh, please uh, do not touch someone's PA this is how I uh, started learning this seven layers. And that is the, that uh, now I think about the seven layers. Uh, it, it is so funny, uh, how did I learn? And I got the marks, but I didn't even understand why I used it. Um, it is like uh, scoring marks. I, I learned something, something, and I wrote, I, I scored, but finally it became my career. It's a, it's a fate, right? <laughs> okay. Um, Talks apart. Um, we know that uh, I, I just uh, streamlined uh, uh, the voice infrastructure, which is involved in the seven layer. <coughs> that, excuse me. Okay. Um, it's CAT5 uh, cables, what we connect in the physical layer, Ethernet, which learns the MAC, MAC address of your devices, IP address, which falls in networking and um, TCP, UDP, you know TCP, I believe. It is uh, uh, the package, it, uh, it sends data. UDP, it sends uh, a voice data. It is a uh, user data game protocol. And RTP sessions, I'll, uh, I'll explain you about RTC sessions when we discuss, uh, discuss about um, IP phones. Um, it is RTCP, it is a secured level of uh, communications. And Kodak, this coding and decoding, 
um this is what uh, voice relays um all your uh, voice packets it will be converted into vdp and uh, converted into um, uh, coding and decoding it will it will uh, decode uh, it will code your voice packets send the packets through the phones and it will decode again at the receiver end and uh, this is a uh, um, interactive voice vip this is where uh, uh, sip involved the complete future is into sip so uh, we need to consider much in sip i'll just uh, uh, give a brief very very um, basic brief it is like uh, protocols used in uh, voice uh, voice technologies it's h323 uh, um, mgcp sip sccp tcp udp i have told you and rtp rtcp as of 33 it is a protocol i have uh, segregated like uh, which layer it has been used uh, it is in uh, network a standard created by itu these are all just uh, just for uh, uh, knowledge purpose nothing more and um, industrial uh, support excellent because most of them uh, use as of 33 gateways even now for your kind information uh, only 5% of indian market is filled with wipe still we have 95% so uh, to be deployed we are uh, safe enough to take this carrier if you want and um, user uh, it is used in gateways ip phones now mgcp uh, does uh, it is used in gateways and they uh, used in limited in ip phones and it is used like in client server model and uh, the sip the great man is here <laughs> it's peer to peer we have uh, a gateway uh, we can have a sip gateways in this um, ip phones sip ip phones everyone every technology is moving into sip secure and security level or um, um, we can't say uh, it is it is open source and uh, everyone is developing it so it is rapidly developing uh, technology sip even uh, everyone uh, day by day uh, even now we are talking about sip it is it is growing uh, day by day so uh, again uh, coming to the topic we move to sccp it is a cisco proprietary pro protocol uh, it is only used in cisco tcp udp it is general topic uh, we can we can move on to the next slide and uh, we can discuss about uh, tcp udp it is not a big deal and um, this was my first question uh, when i entered into uh, voice voice domain or voice technology um what was uh, ip phone starting uh, starting up process mostly uh, with this uh, when you are uh, entering uh, as a fresher you don't jump into this is audible team yes sir okay fine okay this was my first question and uh, when you are uh, coming into uh, uh, it domain you don't jump into the servers and configure initially you work with the uh, um end users end users or ip phones every time they come up with the ip phone is not getting registered with the with this status you you may understand uh, how we can uh, how is the problem a bad is the problem and uh, what is the issue so uh, we need to understand uh, these six steps i'll just uh, give an intro we have lot of videos lots and lot of tons of videos about this i'll just explain you how um it is like a, a normal cisco switch when you are connecting a ip phone to it it uh, give uh, whenever a new device is connected it it gives a, as a process it gives a minus 48 volt to the switch if it is an ip phone it will loop back itself and it sends my minus 48 back to the switch from from where the switch understands it's a phone and it provides a plus 48 uh, volt of power that is poe switch it, it, it uh, ip phone gets the power and boots by itself the image it has this is the first and second point and switch provides a vlan information uh, to the ip phone um, ip phone 
receives this VLAN information and uh, phone sends a DHCP request. Um, uh, once uh, receiving a DHCP request, uh, um, the switch sends uh, IP details, IP information, and TFTP server server address. Here comes the option 150, uh, which which helps uh, uh, the phone to identify its TFTP server and get registered. If this flow is right, the phone get registered. If somewhere it get disconnected at this point or the phone itself is not booting up, we, we need to put yourself in that particular point and identify what is the issue is. This is how you start with the phone troubleshooting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, before moving into uh, uh, Cisco in-depth uh, call manager stuffs, I just want uh, everyone to know about the endpoints. What are all the devices used in these endpoints uh, in this um, call manager setup? As endpoint, is, it is like it, everything here is an IP phone. It's a video, audio, um, conferencing phones. All these are endpoints, and this is uh, it's a, it is like a workplace uh, resource. It's like a telepresence, a video communication in the room. Um, Unity, Unity Express, emergency responder. It is like a 911 emergency responder we use in US. We, need, we can configure a separate device. Uh, unified contact center solution. They have given it in a simple, simple box, but we can uh, we can look look into this later. We are going to discuss about this. Meeting place and unified presence. Presence is to uh, it is self-explanatory. So uh, it, it is like uh, uh, the availability of the user. We can we can find that with the presence and chat. Um, Cisco Unified Communication Manager and Communication Manager Experts. And these are all the uh, inter infrastructures uh, which has been used uh, to achieve this CUCM uh, for end-to-end -end calls. Before moving to uh, Cisco Unified Communication Manager, it was like a Cisco Voice. Uh, voice it, uh, it slowly moved into unified communication manager. Uh, why? Because initially it was only the voice which was uh, communicating between uh, phones, between um, endpoints, two endpoints. Uh, later, it uh, just uh, involved uh, uh, instant messaging, video, uh, audio uh, in the, into the same platform. So uh, it has been uh, into the, into it, it has been changed as an unified communication manager. We communicate all um, um, IMs, chats, um, audio and video through through this uh, infrastructure. Okay, we are uh, going to look into CUCM infrastructure diagram. This is a CUCM cluster. A simple, uh, uh, if you want to explain what is CUCM cluster. Cluster consists of uh, eight subscribers and one publisher. Uh, in eight subscribers, we have two TFTP servers, which is used for um, registration purpose, and uh, all other six will be used for uh, um, call communication uh, purpose. And the publisher is to uh, uh, sur survey. It, it is the publisher is the one which controls all the subscribers. Um, and TFTPs. In this uh, diagram, we can see a voicemail. We'll, voicemail, it is like Unity connection has been used. Contact center. Contact center uh, is a complete solution. We, we have media conferencing. It is enable uh, conferencing, media conferencing. We can have an uh, media conferencing, external media conferencing too. Present servers. We, we saw that in the uh, applications we use. Third party servers, if required, we can use it. It is a switch. Uh, these are all the difficulties uh, on uh, I, I faced. I see this as an, I don't understand it is a cluster. I was surprised on seeing this. What is this a kind of phone and what is this the call? What is called? I'm, I'm saying this about back 10 years. Now uh, more, we have videos, um, a lot of explanations about uh, how it works. Mm. And uh, it is a uh, voice gateway. It is a SRST gateway. We can discuss about SRST in the upcoming slides. 
switch and IP phones. These are all the picto pictographical representation about uh, the slide. It is an IP, IP WAN and a PSTN. This is a voice gateway. Voice gateway have uh, FXS and FXO ports. And uh, this uh, FXS, uh, I'll explain about FXS and FXO. Uh, FXO is PSTN and uh, we can have a T1 connections too. And IP VLAN, uh, IP WAN, it does an uh, um, connectivity between uh, branches. We can have a, um, a dedicated line um, dedicated uh, voice broadband for this to uh, get connected IP WAN. Let's see about uh, CUCM deployment models. Uh, we have uh, three deployment models, actually four. We can uh, we can uh, segregate as three. Campus single side deployment model. We have all this cluster publisher, subscriber, TFTP all in one roof. That is a single site. That is a data center. These are all the applications. This is uh, a PSTN connection voice gateways. And uh, it is an end user. It is a um, uh, H.33 gateway. This is a simple infrastructure we have. Uh, a fully loaded cluster, I told uh, a fully loaded cluster has a publisher and eight subscribers. If you want to have a minimal uh, uh, configuration, you can have one publisher and uh, two subscribers and two subscribers can function as a TFTP. We can, uh, I'll, uh, it is just an intro. I have, I'm giving a lot of inputs. You just uh, grab whatever you are able to uh, and we can discuss uh, something if required even later. And that is a multi, uh, what to close this? Yeah, it is a uh, multi-site uh, with distributed call processing. It is, uh, uh, we will be having uh, multiple uh, um, clusters, one publisher and a few subscribers. Similar to that, we'll be having another publisher in another uh, branch, another publisher in uh, second branch. All these three branches will be connected and it will be uh, worked as a cluster. This is uh, similar to uh, multi, um, multi deployment, multi call processing. It is a centralized call processing. Uh, all the call process will be, all the branches will be segregated. We'll be having a routers, all the call, when even, when IP phones try to call an IP phone in the home office, it uh, just, uh, the call is getting processed uh, in this UCM and the call is getting routed. This is a uh, multi-site deployment with centralized call processing. And uh, we'll be having SRST, I told, uh, we can discuss about this, SRST. <clears throat> A survivable uh, remote side telephony. This telephony, how do uh, um, it is like this with this diagram? I can explain you. It's an IP phone. It's a voice gateway. This voice way, voice gateway is being configured as an SRST. Um, the call initiated from an IP, IP phone goes via uh, IP WAN, which is the voice gateway here. It routes through uh, routes. Uh, through the call manager and then the call manager routes the call to IP phone. This is a normal process. Uh, if When IP WAN is on, if you see uh, there is a disconnection in the IP WAN, what, uh, what it does is this uh, SRST will not have, a, this, this branch office will not have a connection uh, to, uh, to this uh, HO. So this SRST uh, will be configured with the T1. This T1 will be connected with the PSTN link. Then the calls will be routed to this home office and routed back to uh, this IP phones. Yeah, the end user will not even aware uh, there is an IP outage, IP WAN outage. Uh, we'll be having a uh, millisecond uh, flap between the IP WAN and uh, uh, PSTN. The, the end user will not even aware uh, there was an outage. Once it does uh, uh, works in this uh, platform, and if uh, IP van is uh, coming back, it will fa fail back automatically. No need of any manual interventions. Okay, this is all about uh, in this before we are moving into uh, contact center uh, solution. 
I just want to, uh, I have given a brief about CUCM. CUCM uh, itself, uh, um, major technology, and uh, I have given a wide brief. So we can, we have lots, tons and tons of uh, features can be enabled in uh, um, uh, CUCM, like extension mobility, phone mobility, S uh, SRN, um, pick to um, park, pick a call pickup park, a lot of options are there. A lot of uh, um, features can be enabled in CUCM. I have given you a brief, uh, a, a brief about CUCM. We can, uh, um, we can involve, we can spend time. If you choose voice as a domain, you need to start from here. I had the difficulties in understanding CUCM. So uh, I have segregated things and uh, elaborated uh, what all the technologies we use and how it has been used in an infrastructure. Um, we can later, if we have a possibility, we can we can have a, a more sessions, upcoming sessions to explain uh, even deeper about this uh, CUCM. Okay, let's move on to uh, Cisco Unified Communication uh, Contact Center. <sighs> contact Center solution. Uh, why do we call as an uh, Unified Contact Center solution? Um, contact center express and solution. Solution is what, uh, it is adapt adaptable. Um, we can, it is like, um, we can use third parties. Mul uh, we'll be having multiple components used in uh, Cisco Unified uh, contact centers. Contact center, it is, uh, it is not in the box, what uh, CUCM, uh, Cisco given as CUCM. It is uh, multiple components uh, involved uh, put together, and we can uh, use uh, third parties interventions to um, to achieve uh, uh, the this uh, unified communication contact center solution. Um, if uh, if you think it is an uh, odd word, it is like unified contact center solution. What is this? You just imagine uh, uh, everyone would have called. Uh, <clears throat> um, your banks, right? All your banks uh, works under uh, just a moment. Just um, my throat's got dry. <laughs> Sorry for that. And um, you, everyone would have uh, called your bank. And you, you would have uh, gone through an IVR. Um, what uh, you'll be welcome to so and so bank. Uh, you'll be having uh, banking sectors, um, insurance, health uh, um, policies, and last of card and everything. Uh, it will be navigating. You'll be navigating to all the options, and you'll go to a particular uh, option what you need. This is what a contact center is. This is what you're going to build. This is what I'm into. <clears throat> um, for uh, 400 uh, agents, uh, we have two different types, Cisco Unified uh, Contact Center Express and Cisco Unified Contact Center Solution. Express, uh, it is a, for a, a low minimum budget uh, company, which, which can have a 400 users, 400 agents. And uh, the call comes through, uh, only 400 agents can uh, attend. And we can uh, expand if if you need uh, <clears throat> if you need uh, uh, need to expand. We can't do that with the existing uh, uh, contact center express. It is a, a simple box kind of an infrastructure given by Cisco. Only 400 agents can be uh, accommodated in this particular thing. We can achieve a lot of uh, what are all the features you come across in uh, uh, when when you're calling um, a bank. You'll be calling a bank. It will be auto uh, automatic call uh, distribution. It, it is like uh, the call will be distributed to the agents. It is ACD, we call it as an ACD. You get a uh, uh, response and a uh, computerized voice. Welcome to Source Own Bank, it is an IVR. Um, what is that? Mm -hmm. Give me a moment. It is an IVR, and uh, ASR and TTAs are being used uh, uh, when you are pressing one or two. It it, uh, it 
uh, gets your input and it is getting processed. It is, uh, if you are saying it in voice, it's in ASR, yeah, and TTA is in text to speech. Now, if you are pressing one or two, it will understand the option it and it, it will get navigated. These are all the options. What do you use? Uh, we are working in background. It's a simple uh, infrastructure about UCCX. Um, CAD, uh, these are, this is an uh, um, computerized um, Cisco agent desktop uh, where uh, the agent uh, will sit in this computer and attend the call. Um, they'll be having a hitch similar to this. Uh, they'll be having uh, calls to attend over the day. So this, uh, Cisco has designed it for, uh, it, is, it is called as in CAD, C-A-D. There is an engine. Uh, administrator, uh, data storage, and cluster view. We have a primary and secondary Cisco Unified UCCX cluster. It, it, it forms in cluster, not like CUCM. CUCM, as I said, uh, we have publishers and subscribers, Unified Communication Manager and CTA Manager, which communicates with an engine uh, with UCCX. This CAD, uh, we have an uh, CAD support, which communicates with UCCX. And with that, uh, UCCX, it's communicated with an engine, and the engine communicates to CCT, CTI, sorry, the CTI manager. And from then it moves uh, to the call manager and goes to the gateway. If it is an outbound call, it, it makes an outbound call. If it receives a call, it navigates it's through the same way. Let's uh, discuss about uh, contacts and the solution. There was a small box in the intro I have given uh, we have a lot, lot of uh, uh, components involved in this. Okay, a similar process of UCCX, what we discuss in uh, CDI, computer telephone interfaces, um, automatic call distribution, IVR solution, all these can be achieved in this enterprise uh, solution. We have multiple components uh, involved um, in this. I'll show you uh, one by one. It is a call router. All these are into Cisco. Uh, all uh, all these are in uh, Windows right now. Currently, we are into uh, 12.x version, and um, it is it might be migrated uh, to Linux uh, in future. Currently, we are into Windows Windows servers. It is all our Windows servers. If it uh, Windows servers, when we are installing a patch that converts that uh, uh, Windows server into a router, that converts a uh, Windows server into a logger, that similar patch converts uh, into a PG. And uh, inside PG, we have PIM. And excuse me. Okay. It is um, CTI, CTI servers, CTI OS, um, AW. AW is a configuration window where we configure uh, Cisco <clears throat> routers. HDS, it is a uh, historical database, and DDS, digital data, uh, detailed database. It is an, a logger, saves uh, HDS, saves into HDS, and uh, then again in DDS. And uh, web, uh, web view report and CUIC, it is again for a report. Mm. Okay. Let's uh, discuss about uh, something about uh, Kodak. I missed the uh, Kodak, I think. Kodak, it's, uh, I told you about uh, coding and decoding. We have uh, multiple uh, Kodaks, mostly used our uh, G711, 729. New law, A law, and uh, G722, IBL, and um, most most of this we use only two with G711 and 729. Why? Because G729 is uh, we have minimum bandwidth, and G711 it does a 64 uh, 64 bit KV base. So uh, it's an, uh, just an uh, um, brief about uh, Kodak. Let's come into uh, uh, contact center solution. Um, as you said, uh, you just uh, a caller is calling into the PS team, comes into a cube. Why we are using cube? It is an ingress gateway. 
um, it is in the cube is in uh, it will convert uh, the color may be called in different Kodak and uh, that Kodak will not be understandable by uh, uh, contact center solutions. So cube will convert that Kodak to they understand and it is like a, a person speaks in English and uh, the person who knows in contact center is Tamil. It will convert that uh, into Tamil and it will transfer it. So everyone uh, in this contact center will understand. And they say that in Tamil and it will be converted again into English for the user to understand. This is how a simple cube we can understand or what it is. Ingress gateway. Ingress gateway for incoming call. And if it is a large network, we'll be having ingress and egress gateways. Egress gateways, it, it, they'll be used for outgoing, outgoing calls too. Um, when you are uh, talking about uh, CVP servers, we have uh, media server, VXML server, and call servers uh, in CVP. And services uh, perspective, uh, we have uh, media, uh, we have SIP servers, ICM service, and uh, IVF service. These services are involved in CVP. What is CVP actually? Uh, Cisco voice portal, or customer voice portal, Mm. All uh, the IVRs, what we hear uh, uh, when you're dialing a, a bank, all the IVRs will be stored uh, in, the, in this media server. Whenever uh, there is a need, uh, the contact center takes this media server, uh, takes this uh, information from the media server, uh, and it is using it uh, for the caller. It is a bootstrap or tickle. We have a lot of information, but uh, uh, you will not be able to understand uh, uh, what is a tickle file and things. And you just uh, briefly understand it is a media server, which has all your uh, media informations. And uh, whenever uh, there is a need, it will be uh, taken by the contact center and used in uh, voice, voice gateways. And again, uh, it is just in via CVP server I'm talking about. This is a uh, all five, it was initially the call managers, it will be, uh, I have given in uh, um, um, a cluster format. Now I'm giving it in a single format. It is like a CUCM, this is CUCM and CUIC for reporting. And we can discuss about, uh, still we are not into contact center. It is about the IVR, what we are uh, hearing in uh, while calling bank. And the finesse, it is another uh, clustering technology. Uh, this booming technology where we no need of uh, CTA voice, CTA servers. And um, it is an uh, IP phones, finesse desktop. And uh, this is a reporting tool. Let's uh, talk about uh, before moving into contact center and uh, CVP can be configured in uh, uh, CVP OAMC. OAMC, we can, there is a browser uh, OAMC, we can configure CCM, sorry, uh, CVP. Um, it will be, uh, uh, this is this is the medium you will be configuring a CVP. And simple uh, when you're saying it. Okay, uh, let's move on uh, to the contact center now. Contact center, it is in a, a router logger. We call as a central controller. A router and logger has been called as a central controller. We have a HDS, the components we already we discussed in previous slide. Uh, AW, HDS, um, AW, it's in a configuring tool where we configure uh, this router. And HDS, in, uh, it's a database. And uh, DDS in a secondary database, what we use. Um, it is like a uh, brief about uh, what is router, call router in ICM. It is a um, brain for the system. Uh, without route, router, nothing. You can do nothing. Um, I, I, I have highlighted a few points, which is uh, important in this, so we can uh, uh, no need to read uh, the stuff. All uh, routing decision has been taken care by call router. Um, if call comes in, it uh, understands the call, it analyzes the call, and it uh, routes the call uh, back and forth uh, uh, to the uh, CVP level, to the CUCM level, and to the agent level. All these decisions have been route, decided by this router. Um, 
running in uh, synchronized uh, exception ex executions is it, it is like uh, uh, we will be having a couple of routers in go moving uh, moving forward we will be discussing about uh, uh, routers um, we will be having two different routers but it will be in synchronized mode call call details uh, call information uh, end to end call uh, informations have been logged in logger uh, it, it helps to store uh, in the database in hts and dds i have already told you about this what is peripheral gateway peripheral gateway this was uh, toughest part i was not able to understand when i was uh, when i was seeing this before 10 years what is in the peripheral gateway they say everything it is it is as simple as like a uh, uh, icm router need to communicate with uh, other devices um, icm routers uh, can be communicate uh, via pg and pim and uh, uh, work with the call managers to route the call as simple as it is a, it is a skeleton of what i said we have uh, ivr system involved um, we have call manager systems involved uh, and uh, we have lot of other third parties reporting uh, we need uh, router uh, inputs all the router inputs will be shared via pg and to the respective uh, um, respective ivr systems or uh, uh, call manager systems it, it will be, it will be used to communicate what is pim again it is the biggest uh, uh, it is pg pg is also uh, again uh, a, a windows server we configure that uh, with a patch and pim is a connection uh, within the pg that is the connectivity which establish um, to the other servers and uh, again uh, we talk about vr pg voice response unit pg it discuss uh, it it will it will be connecting with the cvp call servers cvp pim cti voice all all these things will it, it is again a pg but it is integrate uh, interacting with the voice response unit so we are calling that calling this as an vr pg no, nothing nothing special in this but when you are uh, coming into the production you will be uh, understanding what is what and why we are using cucm pg separately why we are using vr pg why uh, what is generic pg these these differences you will be coming into uh, when you are learning into the technology or uh, into technology you will be coming to know uh, why and what okay this is a uh, central controller as uh, already said uh, router and logger we uh, it is combinedly known as uh, the central controller it is uh, nic every every system has a nic right network interface card but in router and router we have uh, um, high priority uh, high uh, and high nic and low nic high nic uh, it is uh, it is a connection between uh, routers when uh, when you are come uh, looking into a duplex contact center uh, control center controller you will be having uh, you can see uh, a router here and uh, another router here a logger here another logger here but combinedly we will be saying we will be saying uh, a single router and single logger if uh, in the ucc network but physically it is two different uh, routers this is called a central controller and this is called a central controller but combine when you are com uh, looking into the call flow but uh, this this network will be considered as a duplex control uh, central controller sorry <clears throat> this is this is how it looks and uh, if uh, uh, you make some changes uh, in uh, aw it uh, directly writes in the uh, router and then in the logger and uh, then into the uh, databases sds and dds and all informations will be stored okay let's talk about uh, <clears throat> icm deployment it is uh, 
and uh, we can segregate these three into one uh, it is like cisco contact center router logger we i have already told as this in the center controller if a router logger and uh, uh, router logger and pg it is called a proger this is what proger router logger aw it's called roger and router and logger separately we call as in uh, route logger central controllers we have uh, uh, deployments like multi site and multi site geo uh, distributed if this same route logger i think i'm i'm boring you a lot right okay if it is a uh, router and logger it comes under uh, same roof it is a multi site multi site deployment and uh, if it is in different different roof that is different uh, geo locations and then uh, it is called an uh, multi site geo uh, geographical distributed geographically distributed this is how uh, if you are keenly look i don't want to move these slides into single single slides so i brought everything into a same slide so apologize and uh, failover scenarios i have uh, given um, before moving into this uh, failover scenarios i just want to uh, give a little bit extra about um, router loggers i we we talked about the physical servers physical connectivity nic uh, router loggers hds dds and their connectivity but actually there is an uh, a scripting called uh, um, icm scripting where we uh, navigate the call we just uh, all routing decisions uh, how to navigate uh, the call how to treat a call all been uh, configured uh, in the scripting part um, it will be like um, drop down boxes where we can easily navigate but it is uh, it is a uh, complex version when you are going into a bigger bigger environment and uh, cvp it is uh, i have told you the physical part we have uh, cvp coding cvp development side as well we have lot more into it um these are all uh, what we discuss is about all our basics okay am i uh, really talking is everyone is everyone hearing about what i'm talking are you able to hear me team yes sir they they can hear yeah. you yeah just just want to make sure um this everyone is hearing that's it okay so uh, we have uh, different uh, uh, failure uh, scenarios it is single router just uh, i'll brief about this uh, diagram it is a router here we have a, a duplex model they are explaining about uh, two routers and two loggers if a router uh, fails what happens the call continues we don't have uh, we don't feel any uh, failure because it's an active active uh, model router will be working as an active active model so if one router fails we don't have any issues the call continues and uh, if once it comes up it will automatically sinks if uh, either side of router and logger fails still the call uh, the end user or no one in the contact center come no one uh, will experience that that they have a problem only administration administrating team will experience uh, these uh, there is an there is an outage and they'll be working on that no end user or uh, agent will experience any issues okay uh, one side of router and one side of logger is, is fine for a, a cluster to run yeah consider if both the loggers goes down and only routers are up even now the icm continues with the uh, uh, without any interruptions calls will run but you will you will completely lose uh, the data of what you had uh, what the conversation uh, had between uh, between the outage logger never writes uh, the inputs what uh, router handles so if it is a banking sector you will be having a major impact 
Why? Because um, banking, each and every call, they they have a banking transactions, and all the calls uh, they come in, they need to be recorded. So one side of a router logger works, and other side goes down. Still, uh, everything works normal. Once the router comes, router and logger comes, it will automatically syncs. And router talks with uh, logger talks with router, router to router, and router to logger. So it will synchronize automatically. We need to cross check uh, all the databases are up, uh, services are up, and we need to validate things. Then we need to find the root cause behind uh, this outage. This is what we do as an administrator. What happens if uh, both is uh, both side router goes out? It's out. The complete contact center is out. Um, everyone in the contact center cannot uh, the calls cannot come in and uh, or uh, or go out from the contact center. This is the worst part. We we never uh, we cross fingers. We never experience this in uh, this in our network. <laughs> <clears throat> Again, this is an uh, important link. We need to start uh, learning from this part. This is an uh, important link where I started to learn. Um, so uh, if you want to come into contact center, we need to look into this link. I have given, uh, I, I think I don't have enough time to go through this link. So I have, I have, I'll be sharing this PPT with you all for you to go through this link and they can uh, come up with queries uh, uh, with Adi, Adilingam sir, Pradeep, uh, Arivalagan. So uh, we can uh, discuss uh, it later about automation. Um, this is uh, this is what the major threat. These many years we, we never we never care about automation. It, we never knew about automation too. In a couple of years, we see a lot of uh, migrations of migrations into automation. Um, for an example, I I take uh, uh, six days to build a CUCM server and uh, twelve days to build uh, an ICM server, a complete server. After uh, after that, we need to integrate all these. It takes a month. Um, multiple uh, CUCM clusters. If you, uh, this CPO, it's in Cisco uh, built platform. It is like we need to do it for a single cluster, single uh, server, and uh, we start the CPO process. It automatically builds a complete cluster. I'm talking about a publisher, eight subscribers, um, and uh, eight subscribers, it will automatically get built. Not only uh, installation, but just uh, uh, configure level. If you configure an agent, walk through the CPO for a single time. Uh, this is how we configure an agent. It, uh, it configures uh, for a complete cluster and uh, whatever, whenever uh, we can give an interface to the users or uh, managers to add an agent. So all the agents will be uh, added uh, with a layman. There is be no need of a technical expert who need to look into give an, uh, permission, skill roofs, and other stuff. And this is going to uh, free valuable IT resources to concentrate more on development, more and more on development. So when you have, if you think um, CUCM um, concepts, and uh, contact center solution will serve you, uh, will take you throughout your career? I'll say no, you will not. You will have an experience in that contact center and call manager experience, and you need to know about uh, automations. CPO, it is again uh, um, the bigger deal. Uh, it's, an, uh, uh, it's a kind of solution where we can uh, provide uh, it's a big, bigger uh, concepts. Uh, let's. Uh, you have an intro. When when you are coming into the technology, you will be coming into come 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 to learn about CPO. What is market rec market requirement right now? They need uh, a language. Any one of the language. C C C plus plus Java, preferable. And uh, more into Python automations. 
everything can be done in python so they need uh, they need need not uh, we need not to be an expert uh, in this python or java um i i had i earlier told uh, i chose this profession only because i no need to code code anymore that's the reason i chose networking but finally uh, the day came we need to uh, learn java and python's uh, at current market and uh, this is how it goes it's it's nearly uh, one hour 15 15 minutes I, they have given only one hour for me so we can move on to the questionnaire and and before winding up this uh, session i um, if you are really interested in voice and you need to uh, come into the voice technology you can anytime i i, I have given uh, like in the end of the session i'll be giving my contact details so we can anytime give me a call and uh, we can discuss more about that thank you any questions uh, team okay. sir uh, thank you sir thank you for your uh, valuable session sir sir thank you pradeep uh, sir uh, this is uh, pradeep kumar from nada society college of engineering technology sir uh, there are a few questions from the participant side sir i will list one by one uh, first uh, first question uh, what is uh, meant by clustering in uh, cucm what is meant by clustering clustering in cucm okay um i think we have already discussed about this clustering clustering consists of uh, a publisher and eight subscribers uh, eight subscribers can uh, six subscribers uh, will be handling a calls and uh, tftp uh, servers will be used to used for phone registration uh, this all put together uh, called as a clustering um, and we can we can build a clustering according to the customer requirement Uh, it can be one publisher and one subscribers in one in the same subscribers we can build a tftp if it is a larger environment we go for a fully loaded uh, uh, 8 plus 1 uh, concept and uh, this is called clustering we can uh, yeah you can go ahead for it okay sir i think uh, i answered your uh, question yes sir thank you sir thank you the next question is uh, what is meant by option 150 Uh, and uh, where we are using it sir okay um, option 150 uh, it will be uh, used in the switch where i we are in the phone booting process we were discussing right uh, it will be uh, asking for a tftp just a moment i'll i'll show you in this <clears throat> ip phone gets a configuration uh, uh, from the tftp how would get the configuration tftp informations the switch uh, provides uh, option 150 option 150 is a command which we given in uh, switch where we configure a tftp ip address in that so uh, uh, switch provides the information to the phone phone it uh, takes the tftp ip address and reach uh, reaches the call manager and gets the configuration files this is how uh, uh, each and every phone get registered This is uh, this is where we use uh, option one fifty uh, in this scenario. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, okay. uh, another question, sir. Another question for you. Huh. Uh, what is uh, meant by FXO and uh, FXS in voice gateway? Okay, uh, for next station offers and for next uh, for next station offers is uh, if uh, if you are FXS. it will act like an ip phone you will be having an analog phone you will be connecting a uh, normal cable uh, you will be having a normal analog phones you will be having an uh, phone cable connected to the port of fxs if you are configuring this fxs port we can use this analog phone as an ip phone you can come into the network um in the data centers you will be having a uh, uh, raw data uh, data servers and everything you don't have a phone uh, next to that if for troubleshooting at that point you will be having an analog phone connected to that uh, fxs port to make an ip phone to discuss with the administrator which will be much more helpful uh, for the team to uh, coordinate and fix the issues sure. about fxs if uh, uh, the same person need to call us mobile number they need to uh, uh, reach out to uh, 
they need to uh, access through cell phones nowadays before uh, earlier they don't allow cell phones into data centers they they uh, fxs port they trunk into the fxo port and then try dialing to the mobile numbers other outside of networks which which has helped us uh, in the time of troubleshooting this is where fxo and fxs uh, been used in, in layman language now it got improved into t1 even even we use t1 uh, uh, they are using it in uh, abroad in us <clears throat> Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, uh, another question for you. Uh, what is uh, extension mobility and uh, phone mobility future in the uh, CUCM, sir? Yeah, um, uh, extension mobility, it is a uh, single uh, number configured, um, uh, configured in CUCM. If you, if you are moving into another branch, you are in head office and you are moving to another branch and if you need to log into a phone and access your phone, uh, phone access then you can provide your extension uh, to the particular phone so that uh, you will be getting all your phone features uh, in uh, another phone it is extension mobility and phone uh, mobility you will be carrying your phone with you like a mobile phone you will be carrying your analog um, ip phones with you wherever you go you connect uh, with the internet you get an uh, um, ip phone what you used in a desk the same ip phone is with you you can uh, uh, interact with your uh, colleagues wherever you are that is phone mobility yes, and then uh, uh, one more question from the participant side sir uh, how do cpo works how do cpo works sir? okay um cpo this is uh, this this was the last slide we were discussing about cpo is an uh, automation process provided by uh, cisco if uh, you walk through a cpo step by step procedure and uh, we need to segregate time it will automatically uh, fetch the fetch the steps you you done to the server and uh, replicate uh, same to the uh, other servers in the network it will it will be it is like uh, how we can say if you are aware of mirroring have you ever uh, heard about mirroring it will be copying all the images uh, uh, to os and it will replicate that uh, to another uh, operating system uh, the similar uh, server will be having uh, another server built in few seconds same process of cpo this is not only uh, building a process it, it can be done to a day to day activities what are all the regular activities you do if you configure through cpo then we can achieve uh, that it is a separate server concept we need to install cpo we need to uh, walk through cpos it is a different uh, uh, vast syllabus we can uh, if you are into the network or uh, technology you will be coming uh, you will be coming to know about cpo okay sir Uh, that's all, sir. Uh, that's all from the uh, query side. Uh, 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 information for all the participants. Uh, uh, participants, you can get your feedback link. Uh, either you are in YouTube chat box or uh, in Zoom. Uh, you can take your uh, uh, feedback link in your chat box, and you can fill it, and you'll get your certificates later on. So uh, another time, I'll uh, repeat once again. Uh, participants uh, can get their uh, certificates by filling their feedback link in their. Uh, which is provided in the chat box you all be uh, feedback link is provided in your chat box you can find it and uh, please fill it and it will be provided uh, back with your certificates thank you and then it's uh, now time for uh, revealing our uh, uh, vote of thanks uh, uh, good uh, good afternoon all uh, you know as all good things come to an end in life uh, so is our webinar uh, on behalf of uh, nadar saraswati college of engineering technology uh, i take this opportunity to provo- uh, to propose vote of thanks to those who have directly and uh, indirectly contributed to this webinar on voice networking and automation organized by our institute uh, we are thankful to our honorable teni melapetta hindu nadarnal urinmurai president general secretary and treasurer for their motivation i would like to thank our college secretary joint secretary and principal for their enthusiastic support also i would like to thank our vice principals both academic and admin placement officer 
and all the department heads for their constant encouragement and support. At the outset, I thank our chief guest and resource person, Mr. Sakti Venkatesh. Uh, we are really enlightened with your knowledge and presence. Uh, a special thanks to the organizing committee, teaching and non-teaching staff for their uh, unflinching support and coordination. Our heartfelt thanks to all the participants for their active participation. Uh, with these warm words and a kind message, we move to the end of the today's webinar. Thank you. Thank you, one and all. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, team. Thanks for the opportunity. See you. Bye-bye.